Hey, this is Stephen from Wild Stuff. Welcome to the show. In this video, I'll be hiking up the Corker Trail in the Barrington Tops to spend a couple of nights hammock camping in the snow at Wombat Creek. I'll also put in a quick visit to Selby Alley Hut. At the end of the video, I'll also give a quick rundown on some of the key items of gear that I used to hopefully answer some of the many questions I get about my sleep system. The adventure starts at Lagoon Pinch Picnic area, near the Lower Williams River and not far from the Old Barrington Guest House. A point worth noting is that there is no motor vehicle access to the Corker Trail at all, it is strictly walkers only, though I did see a couple of very determined bikepackers as well. Those of you familiar with my channel might remember I did a similar adventure back in August 2019. Check the description below for a link to that video. I had so much fun on that one that I decided to do it again, and I managed to rope in a few more people this time around. So on the hike up I was kept company by Kelly and Nick from the Hunter Valley Outdoor Adventure Group, at least for the first night anyway. It's a 3 hour slog over 8 kilometres up the side of the mountain with a loaded pack, and you gain about 800 metres of vertical elevation, most of which is done in the first half of the hike, so at parts it can be pretty steep. I wouldn't recommend this hike to a beginner unless they are exceptionally fit, and even then I wouldn't suggest doing it in winter when there's a big dumping of snow on the forecast. You can see how fit I am when I nearly get stuck in this tree. Some parts of the Barringtons have been quarantined off due to a fungus with an unpronounceable name, so you'll occasionally see these boot scrubbing stations on the main trails. I'm not sure if there's meant to be a fungicide or chemical in there or not, it looks like muddy water to me, but we're happy to comply. Wombat Creek is a very cosy, welcoming little campground, complete with a running freshwater creek though I'd still suggest filtering or boiling the water due to the wild brumbies in the area. There's a variety of small sheltered campsites suitable for small tents or hammocks. I've got my two favourite trees which I use every time I come here, which are the perfect distance apart from my hammock and tarp. So the forecast had been spot on, and the place transformed overnight into a snowy winter wonderland. This time I'd brought along a second tarp for somewhere to keep my firewood dry, and also a little shelter for preparing meals. After Kelly and Nick left to return to their responsibilities in the real world, I was joined by Ben from the channel Outdoor Hiking Therapy and his friend Keith. They were part way through a four day adventure around the Barrington Tops and had just spent the previous night at Junction Pools when the snow started falling. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. There we go. 
That Saturday night was the busiest I've ever seen Wombat Creek. Lots more hikers were arriving and tents were popping up everywhere. And of course I had to put in another visit to Selby Alley Hut. This was built in the 1950s by the Newcastle Bushwalking Club as an emergency shelter for bushwalkers. I stopped at a small clearing on the way back down the mountain, with views across to Carey's Peak at the top right. And finally I was back at the car park at Lagoon Pitch. After last year's video I was hit with a flurry of questions about my hammock and sleep system, so I've cut back to the comfort of my living room to give a breakdown of the main items. I'll put a standard can of soft drink in the shot for size reference. First up, the hammock is a Hammock Bliss Standard Single. I also got two extra long tree straps with it, which with some difficulty can be squeezed into the same stuff sack. Next is a Cedar Summit hammock tarp with three little MSR tent pegs. This is the main blue tarp you see over my hammock in the video. Then there's the Cedar Summit ultralight single air mattress. This is the lighter non-insulated version which works well enough in most Aussie conditions. Even in a hammock you still need something underneath you so you don't freeze, an underquilt or a sleeping pad of some sort. This one packs down to almost nothing and gets the job done. Next is my SOL Escape Bivy Pro. I'd describe this as an outer shelf for your sleeping bag, made of an industrial thickness space blanket kind of material, which reflects your body heat straight back at you, and also protects your expensive down sleeping bag from wayward snowflakes or moisture. This thing's incredible, and I've nicknamed it the Jaffle Maker. And last but not least is my sleeping bag, the Cedar Summit Tylus TS3, with a claimed comfort rating of minus 9 degrees Celsius. This, when combined with the SOL bivy bag and about 8 layers of icebreaker merino thermals, kept me pretty toasty. In last year's video I took a much lighter bag, the Cedar Summit Spark SP2, with a comfort rating of 7 degrees Celsius. You can see it's considerably smaller but still performed well. I opted for the bigger one this time round for a little more comfort. So, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more adventures.